I'm Lou Stanfield, and you're watching Rugby Wrap Up. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dog. I'm Lou Stanfield, and you're watching Rugby Wrap Up. Coming up next on Rugby Wrap Up, Matt McCarthy and Steve Lewis talking Major League Rugby. Rugby Wrap Up brought to you in part by Irish Rugby Tours, the Rugby Tours people. A balanced palate, nutrition for peak performance. AFIA Sports Training Group and Big and Whistle on West 36th Street, the world's best rugby club. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap Up. Matt McCarthy and Steve Lewis at our satellite studio, the world's best rugby pub, the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street in New York City. And Stephen, we're talking a little MLR action with a USA rugby legend on the horn. Indeed, indeed, looking forward to it. Yes, we have Mr. Lou Stanfill, he of the three Rugby World Cups. And Lou, who's that you're with right now? Uh, this is my son. It's 7, it's 7 a.m. here in California, so this is my uh, this is my quality time before I head to work and uh, I get all the things I need done on the day. A little daddy time. That's right. We got a ooh, ooh, yeah, gorilla. And either that or he'll be screaming outside the door, so. <laughs> All right, Lou, Lou, do either of you know what the number 344 is? Yes, that's my uh, eagle number. Ah, that's a savvy man right there, trying to slip one by you early in the morning. Yeah, Blade, you know, Blade Scully and some other boys worked real hard to, uh, to get that in line. And so uh, uh, it'd be a shame if anyone who was an eagle didn't understand or what their eagle number was, because that's a, uh, it's a pretty important part of uh, you know, any national team is the... Um, order in which you got your cap is that r is for rugby in your hand lou you you reading <laughs> <laughs> no we actually read that um we read that so much that he got so excited that he ripped nearly half the pages out so we got to get ourselves another one <laughs> <laughs> good stuff i think we might be able to broker that deal for you you're a, a part-time player for the san diego legion how does that part-time thing working when you are basically on the field all the time well, you know, at the moment, it sounds like um, we have a couple of other athletes who are uh, due to show up, but due to the government shutdown, it's, it's been difficult to get their visas processed. In between myself and, and the organization, that, that my, uh, my involvement was going to be as needed. And, uh, you know, having someone of my experience come off the bench could be, could be of value. Um, but, you know, the past three games, I've had to, I've had to be an 80-minute man, which... Uh, uh, you know, my body's not incredibly thankful for, but uh, my heart and mind are. It's been real good to get back in the mix and, uh, uh, and, and just feel my value on the pitch once again. Uh, that's, you know, as a player, not as a coach. So, bottom line, I mean, so you're enjoying it. That's the main thing. I'm loving it. I mean, you know, I, I, love, I really appreciate the organization. I like all the guys that I'm playing with. Um, you know, the, the San Diego Legion have fantastic facilities. You know, our home field is – uh, you know, is, is incredible. On a sunny day, you know, I, I, even during the Seattle game, which was, you know, probably one of the wettest games I ever played in. I mean, it was still a fantastic venue. And uh, uh, I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to play with them again. What, what difference, if any, do you notice? Um, you, you've been out, what, two, three years? Um, do you notice anything that jumps out from you, either tactically or conditioning or refereeing, any, anything that you might find different? I've also been coaching, albeit at the high school level, but, you know, the, uh, the, the skill ability and, I mean, even though when I was playing, you know, the layered attack was very, very important, uh, but now it's become even more prevalent across uh, many different, um, many different, no, 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 that's coffee, many different skill sets, um, or rather uh, age grades. So it's become very, very important at the MLR level because, well, I mean, we're fully professional. We have to be able to pass catch no matter what the number is on your back and, and uh, make those reads. So uh, I think that layered attack is probably the biggest, um, uh, the biggest change in terms of what has become the normal. Excellent. So you are living in Sacramento and playing for San Diego as a part-time player. So what's the commute situation? When do you go down to training? And how is it that you have the continuity that you do? Because you guys are two and one and you have a lot of players that you've been missing for those various reasons, but how do you handle the, the family life? You have a job and you're living in Sacramento playing in San Diego. I have a fantastic wife and I couldn't be luckier to, to be, to have married up as uh, anyone who's uh, happily married will, uh, 
will, will clearly attest. So my wife is incredibly supportive of, uh, of this opportunity and she loves it. You know, they, they try and come down to as many games as they can. And uh, anytime I see them in the stands, I mean, that just gives you the extra incentive to play a little harder. Uh, my job, uh, I'm the executive director for Rugby NorCal, which oversees all youth and high school rugby um, leagues and development. So, uh, again, I'm in a position where I have a whole lot of work to do, but so long as I can, I can, I can manage that balance, then, then they're very happy for, uh, for my, my ability to go down there. And with the Legion, um, with all those things in consideration, like I said, you know, you're not going to have too many people who are saying, hey, I'll play for you with, you know, minimal financial consideration just because I want to be a part of this. And you're not going to have too many people with three World Cups and 56 caps coming off your bench. Um, and I've been, I've been, you know, not to say that I'm overly confident, but I feel I can go into many different situations and feel like I can hit the ground running just because I've been doing it for so long. Um, so typically what happens is I fly down on Friday morning, I'll get my team run in, play on Saturday, and come home first thing, you know, either Saturday night or Sunday morning. So you're, you're the Allen Iverson of the MLR. Practice? We're talking practice? <laughs> come on. Now, you know I love a good bit of practice, and I'm, I'm, in, I, I, I'm trying to jam a whole lot into my week. So I'm also going back to school uh, to get my AMT certification. So... Um, you know, I'm trying to balance all these things. So, you know, my days are pretty long. I'm up at five. I'm studying or working out. I go to work. I go train at uh, – train the boys at Jesuit High School, uh, still coaching. Um, and then sometimes I go to class, which doesn't get me home until about 10 o'clock. And sometimes I, um, uh, I'm, I'm home taking care of my kid and, you know, spending some family time. I mean, it's, it's – right now I'm uh, – I, I got a lot of volume. But uh, I can tell you one thing is that – I have never been happier post uh, post career that I have right now. Do you have to wear a name tag for these guys to know who you are? Because it's a pr it's a practice. No, they 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 know they know who I am. Come on, man. <laughs> of course, Steve. So so just uh, talking about coaching. So with the Legion, um, who is the coaching team now? You got Rob Hoadley as the head coach. Who's doing? Forwards, who else is contributing in terms of coaching? So you got USA Sevens legend Zach Test. He's in his second season with the Legion, uh, and he's taking care of backs and an attack. Uh, you know, Test is a fantastic coach. He's very uh, uh, he's very big picture oriented, and um, uh, you know he, he's he's earned the respect because he's been there uh, and he's young enough to relate to everyone. So it's a uh, it's it's a fantastic balance. You know, Rob isn't all that old either, so. You know, there's there's a lot of um, uh, there, there's a lot of synergy between coaches and players. And then the new forwards coach there, Scott Murray, former British and Irish Lion, uh, you know, still a young guy in every right. Um, and both he and Tess really complement Rob really well because of that. You know, Rob's very detail oriented, which is very important, right? Because if you don't get the details right, then you're going to be missing a lot of uh, a lot of important lessons. But if you have other coaches who understand that big picture is really another uh, an, another perspective that we need to continue going after, you know, those types of perspectives really, really play well off each other. And, uh, uh, you know, as a, uh, you know, as a first year guy, at the MLR and as someone who's played a long time, this coaching staff seems to get along really well, which is always important for the culture of the team. And so their relationship, our relationship, it's very, um, it's very seamless. Uh, it seems to all come very easily. Yeah, just a quick aside there. So with, uh, with Pro Rugby, Rob Hoadley was involved with the San Diego team. Um, and of the player exit surveys that were done for all the coaches, he came out on top. Really? Big time. Interesting. Yeah, not surprising there. You know, you, you brought up uh, lessons learned and, and, and tactical stuff, but there are intangibles that you bring to the pitch, my friend, in, in the fact that I watched, I've been watching your – your matches. I've been watching you specifically because, and I, as I said to you off camera, I've been blowing enough smoke up your butt. Yeah, he's got, he's got yeah. a man crush. He's yeah, got I got a man crush. crush on you. Well, you know, can you blame me? I'm a little disappointed that there's no more yeah. <laughs> No more mullet. I'm disappointed by that. But uh, you play in an annoying 80 minutes, a pivotal 80 minutes, an annoying 80 minutes. I'm watching you th throw, you know, maybe not necessarily haymakers, but with 
with John Quill, your ex-roommate on the Rugby World Cup tour, Matt Trueville, your buddy. You, you're going out, you're getting these guys. Is that something that some of these younger players need to learn? Need to learn is kind of a uh, it's kind of a real broad thing. I think it's something that just comes with you know a little bit more experience. You know, you look for those little opportunities to uh, uh, to get inside you know the opposition's head. And uh, you know, regarding my role on the team, uh, they're all things that come very naturally. To me. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's because the type of player I am, or maybe it's the type of person I am. But you know, being on the field with your responsibility simply being defense support. When you get the ball, carry hard, carry straight, put back good ball, and scrum and line out well. You know, I'm not asked to come on and be a team leader. I'm not asked to come on to change anything. All I'm asked to do is do perform those roles and perform them to the best of my ability, which has been uh, a big transition for me playing-wise. You know, towards the end of my career in different environments, it was very much, you know, when, you, know you got you know team leader and this and that and – you know, the culture is dependent on, you know, the way I behave and which, I mean, it doesn't mean I alter my behavior, but maybe I have to pay attention to others. And, you know, I, I, it's kind of been very, um, it's been humbling and it's been really good for my personality to understand that my behavior is strictly me taking care of me, do my job well, and then trust that everyone else is going to do their job well. And the people who are assigned with those leadership roles, the captains, the coaches, they're the ones that will take care of everything else. So, um, And that leaves me to be a little free, to be a little expressive when it comes to getting a little niggly on the field. And I noticed that you were expressive when you brought up the Mason Peterson, Rob Brower incident in the Toronto Arrows Austin matchup. You want to talk about that a little bit? You know, I took a look at that video and, uh, you know, it's one thing to, it's one thing to hit someone real hard within the laws of the game and, you know, you mess up, right? A tip tackle may happen or, uh, you know, you may catch in the heat and you throw a punch and then afterwards you're apologizing. Well, when you kind of throw both those two things together uh, and that video clearly shows, um, there's no, in my opinion, there's no room in the game for that. Rugby's, the, the, the core values of rugby are to play as hard as you can and within the laws of the game, and none of it says to try and physically injure anyone else uh, substantially. Um, anywhere around the neck is, is no good. And then, I mean, clearly the video shows him throwing an uppercut, which I don't even know what even else noticed. But that was one of the first things I noticed. So, you know, I, I just find that that type of, um, you know, that, that type of behavior on the pitch, you know, some people might put their hat on that and say, yeah, that's the type of player I am. I'm, you know, I'm aggressive and blah, blah, blah. Well, you're also a detriment to the game because when the public sees that and they don't understand what you're doing, it's uh, – even if you understood what you're doing, it's still not acceptable. And so, I mean, I stand by my, my – I stand by what I said. I believe he needs to be cited at the, um, at the harshest level of whatever the citing commission can, uh, can bring because, uh, you know, no need to put anyone in a position where their injury could keep them from playing the game either short-term or long-term. You know, look at Rob Paler. No one, no, one, no one wants to put that on anyone, and no one needs to have that hanging over their shoulders. And if you're actively, actively doing that, then you are a detriment to the game. No question about that. So I, I think it'll be an interesting test case, really, for the league and how the league handles it. Um, so whether citing and, you know, whatever suspension there is. But I, I think your points were well made. And we'll see how the league's disciplinary process deals with it. Well said, but let's get on with the MLR season that you guys have in front of you. Out of all the teams, I would say San Diego's got a pretty good uh, fairing from the, from the schedule committee. You do have four games out of the gate at home. This will be the fourth. Utah's coming in. Big match. Yeah, you know, uh, and I think it was set up that way simply because of geography. Weather's typically going to be better in California, especially that time of the year. I mean, it's going to be hard to have a home game in New York or in uh, Seattle or, uh, you know, other locations where the weather's going to be a little less, um, uh, a little less kind. But um, uh, it has definitely been nice to be able to just make that short trip, have your home team, have your home field. And, uh, you know, if, if last season's any indicator, you know, it's been so far kind of a mirror image, right? We lost our first home game. And then after that, we kind of pulled our head out and, whether it's, you know, win by the skin of our teeth or, 
you know, uh, you know, win decisively or convincingly through good performance. Uh, you know, the last two games have been um, – they've had learning lessons and they've been something that's kind of helped boost our confidence in certain areas. So, uh, you know, Utah is going to be a good side. They're big, they're physical, they're fast. Um, and uh, it's our last home game of our of, of the front end of the season. I mean, well, I think we'll have one home game kind of per month roughly after this. And uh, – It'll be exciting to go get on the road, but uh, it's definitely favoring us at the front of the season to kind of get our tails up and uh, to have that, um, have that uh, ability to play in front of our home crowd. Yeah, I, t- I tell you, just one player, just get your opinion of, who's really impressed me um, off the bat is this Joe Peterson character. Uh, he's come in, he's done a significant job already. At, is he as impressive close up as he seems? Yeah, no, Joe's Joe's a top-notch guy. You know, all of the guys that have been brought in, uh, new or old, from last season are have been extremely valuable, both on ability standpoint, leadership standpoint, character standpoint. You know, there's 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 no one on the team that I would identify as a, a bad egg. Uh, everyone's brought a lot of value, a lot of humility, which with any team is is going to be. The, one of the core values in order to constantly improve and to work on that um, consistent quality improvement and in, in, in between the lines and outside the lines. Uh, Joe's got a ton of experience. You know, he's the one guy on the team that's older than I am. Uh, he's, uh, he's 34, played with the Stormers. He's played in Super Rugby for many years. Uh, he had a crack at uh, South Africa 7. So, um, you know, from uh, a, a gamer's aspect, I mean, he's incredibly uh, convenient to have. Um, because he can do a lot from anywhere in the field. He's still got a lot of physical attributes, and the guy's quicker than a whip, uh, both mentally and physically. So, you know, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's definitely as impressive as it looks on the field as he is off. Great. So it, it would have been nice if he was next to you when you got out into that 30-meter gallop that you had there. Were you stunned that you were that in the clear for that long? Yeah, yeah, I was. You know, it kind of – Puckered up a little bit, got the ball in my hands immediately for someone else to pass to. But uh, no, that was uh, uh, that's always fun getting, getting the ball in your hands when you don't have a wall of people in front of you. You just got to go win the car crash. All right, we know we know you got to get out of there. You got fifty five thousand things going on. So, last question for you for me is: Who's a player that fans should watch the rest of the season for the Legion? One through. 28, however many we may have, uh, you know, I back our squad. I, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to be on this team because, you know, I, I definitely don't show up being the most athletic guy. Not that that was ever the case, but, uh, you know, I, 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 um, I'm just hoping to meet that baseline standard and, uh, you know, uh, continue to improve as the season goes along with all these young, young bucks. All right, and on that note, on behalf of Mr. Lou Stanfield, the three-time World Cup Eagle, Matt McCarthy and Steve Lewis at the world's best rugby pub, the Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street in New York City, signing off.